Hey, I'm Eric. I'm from France. Hello, I'm Lise. I'm half Danish, half American. And this is Marcel, our van. In January 2016, we decided that we wanted to go and visit farmers. We had been teaching cooking classes, Eric for about five years and me for about three years. We're both cooks and we've worked in a lot of Michelin starred restaurants and we've always wanted to learn more about the products. So we started contacting farmers and asking them if we could come and visit and that's how our journey started. We didn't know nothing about van and what to look for, what to purchase. So just by looking at the websites, we realized that a good van, good value, good quality, in one week it's gone. So the day we found Marcel, we called directly, we say we're coming. We realized that outfitted sprinter vans or old Westphalias wouldn't really work for us. He's almost two meters tall and we also wanted something with a shower and a toilet inside the van so that we wouldn't have to feel like we were imposing. We wanted to be self-sustainable. So that's why a camping car works really well for us. This is Marcel Arvan. Marcel is a Peugeot J5 from 1990. Also a Immer, which is a German brand for all the sleeping and living area in the back. Uh, it's a 2.5 liter diesel. He has zero turbo. Not going the fastest in the world, but if you don't need a turbo, you don't want a turbo. Careful, we're gonna travel in time. Bam! This is a battery for the vehicle, but not the living area. We have another battery for that. We have the spare wheel, of course. This used to be an engine actually for an XM Citroën, which was a very, very reliable car back in the days. Only 2.410 tons, and you can load it up to three tons. It's like 15 meter 63, a long 222 large, and a bit higher than me. We have the gas, it's propane, it's about 30 euros. In the winter, we probably pass through a bottle like this every month, everything runs on gas. But for the summer, it's been like more than, almost like three months. If you have kids or you don't want to open the whole door, you can do this. If you need and you're not tall like me, we have the VIP entrance with a little step just here that folds in. We have a little contact, so we know if we forget it as soon as we drive. In the bumper, we have all the hose to fit the water that is actually just over here. We have 100 liters of clean water and gray water tank, which is also 100 liter. We can last at least a week. Set up for the bikes, to be honest with you, we don't really have time to bike that much, so we put them away for the moment. It's a chemical toilet, but can put a copper solution and you don't have to put all those chemical things inside. Every space is used in a camper or in a van. So we just pull that out, empty it, clean it, and put it back. In the proper areas, don't be like dirty people, because then you give us a bad reputation and we cannot park anywhere anymore. For the hot water exhaust, and everything is on gas, so you need all the burned gas to get out. That's whenever we need to be plugged somewhere. Here we have access to a little compartment that we can also access from the inside. Things we really need the most, like a Frisbee. The cable to plug everything triangles just in case of emergency, winter things. That's for the gas. Also, the first owner had those securities. He got robbed the one time they tried to get in the van, so he decided to add a lot of those, which are actually very convenient. You just turn, go like this, and you have an extra little security for your van. Inside here, I have the batteries for the inside. We don't have like two batteries. We don't have solar panels. We drive a lot and we don't really need those. Figure out really what you need to charge your phones and put like USB things. If you need to charge your computers, go to a coffee shop. I mean, then it depends on your budget and whatever you want to do. This used to be carpet all over. We decided to redo all this in uh, wood. It was supposed to be a cheap wood, but the carpenter told us, well, actually I have spare oak. And we had a little compartment like this for me, also on the tablets and on the other side over there. That's where you can put all the isolations that you need to uh, put on the windows and everything. It gives a lot of space. We also have little island compartments here where we have uh, extra things we can put. It's the good old fashioned European shift stick. This one is next to the wheel. Very, very fancy speakers as well that you can put outside. Et voilà.
we decide to go visit producers and document that, and try to work with them. They're pretty much the stars. If a product is good, all you need is salt and pepper. You don't need to be a great chef. A lot of Michelin starred kitchens are using really good base products. Because they're already working with farmers and artisanal producers that create these amazing products, it facilitates the whole process and it's really a community that gains the Michelin star. They're very generous with their time, with their knowledge, they open their house, we meet their families, mm. they come in the van at lunch. We're cooks and everyone has cooked for us. They work with these products every single day, so they have all of these tips and tricks on how to get the best result out of their product. The methods that they're using are traditional methods that people have been using for hundreds of years, and they're including new technologies and traditional methods of production. Welcome to the inside of my cell. Here is its belly. The stove is connected to the gas bottles which are outside. It's a double burner, so we can actually cook quite a lot on here. And for two cooks in one van, it works out quite well. A Dometic fridge, it can be plugged in on battery or on gas. The little security switch here and the temperature. We've got lots of veggies, some alcohol that we made in Corsica. It's uh, orange liqueur. All of our utensils, lots of knives, microplanes, peelers. Again, we're cooks, so we equipped our kitchen quite thoroughly. All of our cleaning equipment, plastic bags for trash. We try to get really small plastic bags so then we can throw away our trash relatively quickly. A sink, tons of storage. Here we keep all of our dishes and we decided to use metal dishes that we actually bought from my friend's old restaurant. You, know, you can find them on eBay too. All of our breakfast stuff in here. Frankly, because we're cooks, we have way too much food in this van. All of the controls for the vans here as well. The clean water and the dirty water, which reads here. Everything's written in German and then sometimes old owners have written over it in French. The two batteries, an exhaust fan, a light, which actually consumes quite a lot of battery. So we don't really use it that much. The toilets, which have a sink and a fully integrated shower as well. You just take the head here and you pull it out and it becomes your shower. Lots of storage, which we keep for toothbrush and small things that we need on a daily basis. Down there, we have bottles of stuff. Quick drying towels, remember to buy quick drying towels. That's a really good thing. Air vents all the way at the top and one in the bathroom as well. A lot more food from friends and special French producers. We like to cook with as much specialty products as we can. Our closet here and good old uh, shoe rack. Those always help when we've seen lots of people use those in really inventive ways. The guide for the camping car since 1990. We've also got all of these uh, Muji cleaning things. Muji, the Japanese brand, has a lot of compactable storage units and also cleaning supplies. Packs of books with us because we really like to read and I also keep my Kindle with me so we don't have that many books. Clothes here. This is Eric's side of the van. This is my side of the van. Sheets. Clothing. This is really handy. I've seen a lot of great ways for people to store their clothing. Um, one thing that I really like to do is put everything in small bags. Hats, because we work outside. All of our windows are glass. In the 90s, no one was using the plastic. The original owner made all these security attachments too, which is actually pretty handy, but they're super MacGyvered. So we've got little clasps on each side, and then you also have a mosquito net and lined, which actually has reflective from the other side, so it keeps the heat out, sheer curtains, and the more opaque ones, so you really do have choice. Much to my chagrin, we have a TV. It runs on the battery and it has a battery cable, so you can just plug it right in. All of the controls for the heater. This is our radiator that runs on the gas bottles. We also have a hot water feature in the sink too, so you can toggle the temperature. A lot of storage, which again connects to the storage compartment, which is outside. We store our deck chairs, electrical cables, and things like that. Over here, we also have storage. All of our tools and extra bowls and cooking things. If you want to sleep more people, that's never a problem. We can also seat legally six people in this van while it's driving. The table comes out of the rail there. Then it gets fit on the little ledges. And you can pull 
the big cushions together and the small cushions come out and you have a double bed and then you can extend it even further by bringing this one and this one out and then you take this cushion here and you lay it here. The water tank is underneath the seat here. It's 100 liters and it works for quite a few days. Big access here, the pump down here and the exit for the water which empties out into the ground. Water purification, but we put it just in case. Up here is our bed, which comes down to about this height. We've got these blackout curtains, which we stitched and put into the rail. It cuts out cold in the wintertime or heat in the summertime and light from the cabin. It doesn't get inside when we're sleeping. We store some stuff up here. All the insulation for the front window, which is massive. These were custom made for the van. In the morning, we can wake up and just open up the, the window and hear the birds. The mattress, which we just replaced, is 40 meter cubed, 15 centimeter thick. No, in France, you need a specific certification. You cannot make your own anymore, which is a bit sad, but I guess it's for your safety too. Some work around by a van that's already been converted. The insurance already recognizes that van. Otherwise, you can do like what we've done and buy an old camping car. They're not super expensive and they already have all the electricity and the plumbing installed for you. Sending my little message, say, look, I just tried your cheese, just want to tell you amazing. Take this the label and literally call them. A lot of the time farmers have a really big disconnect from a larger public so if you make the effort to reach out to them they'll be so flattered. A phone call means the world and it's also the best way to get someone engaged. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to share it with a friend. And thank you most of all to the patrons who support the channel. I really do appreciate you. If you'd like to learn more about our project, Bonfond, check out our website, bonfond.fr, and our Instagram, at bon.fond. Peace! Have a great week!